Hi, everyone. I'm here with Jess Ekstrom. She is the founder of Headbands of Hope, a company that donates headbands to kids with illnesses with every headband sold. Headbands of Hope has been featured on the Today Show, Good Morning America, QVC, The View, and worn by celebrities like Kelsey Ballerini and Khloe Kardashian. More importantly, Headbands of Hope has donated over 1 million headbands, reaching every single children's hospital in America and 22 countries. Jess is also the best-selling author of Chasing the Bright Side, which we'll, we will be talking about today. So welcome, Jess. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am so excited to talk to you. This is the first book I read for the year, and I cannot tell you, it was so motivational and inspirational, and I'm so glad I started the new year off with it. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that is music to my ears. It's, it's funny because I wrote Chasing the Bright Side, obviously, before the pandemic, and um People are like, oh, did you write this? You know, because we all need a little bit of optimism right now. Like, no, it was just uh, some good timing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that was my question. So why did you write it? Obviously, you, did, you didn't write it during COVID, but um, you wrote it before. Yeah. And what what inspired you? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I started my company, Headbands of Hope, when I was in college. And um, I really wanted to find a way to give headbands to kids with illnesses because that was something that I saw during my internship at Make-A-Wish was kids love to wear headbands after hair loss and no one was providing that. So I call it like the, the dumbest, smartest moment of my life where I was like, oh, you know, I could do that and started Headbands Pope. And um, since then, we've donated over a million headbands. And then I've um, started other ventures like Mic Drop Workshop, which helps women um, tell and sell their story as keynote speakers. And then most recently, an online journal called Prompted uh, that helps people um, write and journal their way to their goals. So I realized like one of the trends that I was seeing in my life and not just in my life, but anyone who's done something that they're proud of, like entrepreneurs, Olympic athletes, any of it, none of them had like a blueprint for what they were doing, but they all had this optimism that what they were doing was going to leave something better. And so I realized that optimism is like less of a mood and more of a strategy. I feel like optimism gets a lot of flack for just like um, almost like toxic positivity, you know, just forcing yourself to be happy. But really, it's about um, how we think about problems and courage to be a part of the solution. So that's where Chasing the Bright Side came from. It's just this trend that I was seeing amongst people who were going for it and had some success was it really wasn't about skill sets. It wasn't about having these perfect plans or, or you know, shooting your target head on. It was this rooted optimism that what they were doing was going to make the world better. And so this is my attempt to help people train their optimism muscle. And I'm glad to say that it's it's working. Yeah, I, I think it is. And what I really loved about your book is that you went through the ups and the downs and you had some twists in there. And I was like, wow, this she just kept going. And that is very motivational. And kudos to your family for what you've all been through and how you picked yourselves back up. And I don't know if you want to talk about that because it, I yeah, think you should read yeah. your book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can give a little um, allude to, to what I feel like you're talking about, yeah, which yeah. Uh, was quite the shock to many people because it was the first time I went public with it because um, uh, this thing that I talk about, I think it's in like chapter two or chapter three, is that I am actually related to Bernie Madoff. He's my great uncle. Um, and so our family, you know, kind of went through the ringer in 2008, just like a lot of people did um, when the market crashed. But ours was more of a media frenzy and um, lost all of our money as well. And, uh, you know, it's something that I have tried so hard to compartmentalize my life where ever since that happened, you know, I told no one, um, except for, you know, like my husband and a couple of my close friends, I, uh, really tried to disassociate myself with anything Bernie Madoff related at all. Like, that's not me. If anything, I almost feel like it pushed me into headbands of hope and doing some of this good work. Cause I, I saw firsthand what like money and greed could, could do to someone. 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it wasn't until I knew that I wanted to write this book where I really had to be honest with myself of like, where is this coming from? You know, where is, uh, how does optimism play a role in my life? Um, that I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta drop the shoe and be honest about, about this story. And I am so glad that I did because, you know, another part of what I do is I train women on how to tell their story and own the messy parts to be a motivational speaker. And so I'm like, I had to, to practice what I preach and, and realize that, you know, this isn't all of me, everything that's happened in our life are just our experiences, but we get to choose how we write the story. Um, So that happening in high school, I think like so much of who I am today is shaped from that. So much of my parents, you know, who lost uh, their money that they've worked so hard for, they're now like park rangers and totally shifted their life. Like so much of who we are as a family, um, it, it was definitely like, a a launching point for a different life that we didn't know existed. Well, that's good. I mean, nobody wants to go through something like that, but you picked yourself up and found something that drove you and was purposeful for your life. Mm -hmm. And I Mm -hmm. love that you talk about finding your perfect purpose in this book as well. And so, yeah, so let's talk about headbands of hope. Tell me how you started it and, and where it is now. Yeah, uh, this was, you know, a, a college dorm room startup as scrappy as they come. And, you know, was interning at Make-A-Wish, seeing a lot of kids lose their hair and, and really wanting to wear headbands. And um, it wasn't until this one uh, girl that I was a part of, like her wish, and she wanted to meet Sleeping Beauty and unfortunately was too sick to go. And so I actually arrived at her uh, house dressed as Sleeping Beauty. Uh, it made her wish come true. And that was like a real um, jolt of clarity that was like, this is what I want to do is find ways to, to connect the dots to something greater. Mm-hmm. And maybe headbands is just that. Um, and I had actually heard the founder of Tom's Shoes, Blake Mykoski, speak at my school a few weeks prior. And he's talking about this one for one model that he created with, with shoes and that he wants to see more like for purpose businesses out there doing the same thing. And so it was very fresh on my mind, um, which is part of the reasons why I love speaking because I was like, Blake, just catching this 45 minute talk completely changed my life. And so maybe, you know, I could do that for someone else in the audience. Uh, So started Headbands of Hope, uh, April 23rd, 2012, sold my first headband to my mom (laughs) and (laughs) my second headband to my grandpa after he called me to figure out how to work the website. Um, And now almost 10 years later, which is absolutely insane. We are um, over 1 million headbands donated. Uh, We just got a deal with the NBA. We're going to be their official headband provider. So many exciting things. Doesn't mean that it doesn't come with a lot of um, growing pains along the way. But one of the things that I I found through, you know, um, running Headbands of Hope was my passion for storytelling. And that like the story of starting Headbands of Hope was this incredible impactful product in itself that could be packaged in the form of like keynote speeches and the book chasing the bright side of if I can share how I was just this 19 year old you know shooting at the hip college student and 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 landed something like this and could have an impact what else is possible for people who put their imposter syndrome to the side and just choose to pursue the things that they believe are good Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I spend most of my time now is not necessarily in the business at Headbands of Hope. I have an incredible team that's, that does that, but, um, on the story side of what does the story of Headbands of Hope, uh, do for others and how can I teach women to do the same thing? Yeah, that is so great. And you could have given up. I mean, you talk about some of the, os- trust me, I thought about it, <laughs> <laughs> but you kept going and that is a success story. And Everybody, this is one of the headbands. Isn't it gorgeous? You're wearing it so well. I love it. I have a clip on, but you can't you can't really oh, see it. We have clips oh, now. Oh, yeah. believe me, I so we have a store here and they sell your products. Oh, amazing. So I I I bought out the store. I got this. Yes. Oh my gosh. It is winter here, so it keeps me uh what's cozy. the name of the store? Oh, it's called Dancer's Dream. 
dancer's dream. Okay, I'll have yeah. to give them a little shout out. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna show you. Oh, quickly. you you stocked up. I, I love did, it. I oh, that one that one's my favorite. Oh, this oh, one. Are really, so those ones are really soft on the side of your head. Like I don't like headbands that grip my head. Oh, well, that's awesome. And of course, the beanie is great too. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Um, I don't usually wear headbands. Um, I thought I'd give this one a try and it is so soft. I can wear it all day yeah. long. Other headbands gave me a headache. So, well, and that's like, you know, a part of our product development process is like the headbands have to feel good on our heads, not just for the consumers like you, but for the patients in the hospital, I personally have a rather large head. I don't know what percentile I'm in, but, um, we always joke that like all the, uh, like uh, adjustable straps on our headbands and the softness, um, have to run through my head first because, uh, headbands, you know, are super tight on my head. Your quality <laughs> control. That's wonderful. I am quality control. I cannot tell you what colors to pick or designs, but I will tell you if they are too tight or give me a headache. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You could use me too, because I, that's happened to me in the past too. I think I have a big head. Well, anyways, we won't go into heads now, but, <laughs> um, so, okay. So you mentioned mic drop. Talk about that more. Yeah. So I, um, like I said, I started doing speaking engagements after I started Headbands Hope. It was a really great way, um, one, to market the business and, and tell people about it because it was so new. And I think the important thing to note here, too, is that I started speaking um, and getting paid to speak before Headbands of Hope was even successful, before I even had a, a name to myself. Um, I was still negative $10,000 in the hole from a loan that I had lost through a fraudulent manufacturer from my dad. It was just like a mess, but I was still speaking about it. And so speaking was actually a way that I could self-fund my business from getting paid to speak. And also the people in the audience that learning about headbands hope and able to purchase headbands after. Um, so one of the things that I had noticed being on the speaking circuit um, and it just became increasingly clear the bigger the stages I got on, especially like business conferences and things like that, was the discrepancy of women or people of color, even just like on these speaking lineups. And um, every single time I get booked to speak, I always ask them, you know, why did you pick me? What was it about me or my story that you book, booked me to come on stage? And I'm not even kidding, multiple times, not even just once they've responded with like, we needed a woman. And we literally Googled like woman speaker. And you were the first one that like popped up. Wow. And there, I even I've spoken at events before, and this is in like 2018, where I was their first ever woman that they had as a speaker. And I was like, okay, you know, something's going on here. Um, and then I was at an event it was an event for event planners and they were having this panel and one, this huge, you know, company, I won't say who it is, uh, had their event planner up there and they said, look, we want to have more women speakers at our events, but they are only 12% of the applications that we get for our speakers. And I was like, okay, there's something. So women um, are maybe not applying and they're also, you know, maybe not getting looked at paid enough. So that was when I started Mic Drop Workshop, which is an online course and community for women to become paid keynote speakers. We've had over 1,200 women go through the course and get their first gigs. So wow. it's been really awesome. It's it's something that's like, you know, philosophically is getting kind of deep, but uh, you think like, there, I think there's a part of your life, for me, it was in my 20s where I thought that my success was based on how far I could reach. You know, how many books can I write? How many stages can I be on? How many companies can I start? How far can I go? And then you realize like if your success is only determined on your own bandwidth and your own dreams, it's exhausting. And it's also very limiting when like, there's only so much you can accomplish in a day or in a lifetime. But if my success is not based on how far I can reach, but how far I can help others reach for me, specifically women, then that is meaningful to me and way much more um, worth my time than just trying to better myself. Yes. And so uh, my drop workshop is just the, the, the results of some introspective uh, learning of like, 
I don't just want to speak. I want to change the speaking industry. And so that's what we're doing. That's interesting. I didn't even think about that women weren't either applying or weren't being asked or weren't speaking. And that's wonderful that you found this challenge and took it on and said, this is, this has to change. And it's it's much bigger than you. And you've done that with headbands of hope. It's much bigger than you. You, you have this purpose and this drive and it's so inspirational. And that is why I want everybody to read your book. Thank you. I appreciate (laughs) that. Thank you. And it's not just, you know, with speaking too. I mean, you look at like that stats around women who apply for the promotion versus men, like women won't apply unless they have a hundred percent of the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Um, And even just, I was reading something right before this that was like women owned companies were only 2% of funding for venture capitalists last year. And so I feel like there's just a shift that's going on. I think if there's one you know, good thing that's come out of the pandemic is a lot of um, focus on inequality, whether that's skin, race, gender, whatever it might be. Um, and so it just kind of poses the question of like how how are you moving the needle, you know? And so it's something that I've been asking myself quite a bit lately. That's, that's great. So what are you working on now? Is it this online journal? I came across that and I thought that was so inventive as well. Thank you. Yeah. It was um, something that I started during the pandemic when I realized um, through writing Chasing the Bright Side, how meaningful uh, writing, just a writing practice was to me. And I couldn't find any journal that was more um, custom to what my goals were or what I needed in that moment. Like most of the journals out there were gratitude journals, which is great, but you know, I don't need gratitude every day. I mean, I know that I do, but I don't need to write about it every day or um, just like a different prompt every day. And so um, right now the the app is called Bright Pages, but we're actually rebranding it to Prompted. And I feel like it's not a journaling app. It's actually a self-help app because you can take a prompt pathway um, from a guide based on what you want to do. So if you want to um, start a podcast, you can take uh, one of our top, like top 10 podcasters in the world has a pathway about how to start a podcast. And it's seven journaling questions to help you through your podcast idea. If you're feeling like in a creative rut, you can take Britt Morin's pathway um, founder of Brit Co of how to tap into your creativity. Uh, I took an imposter syndrome pathway this morning from a licensed therapist. And it was 14 questions about how to get out of this imposter syndrome and it worked. And so I feel like the old ways of self-help are giving you all the answers. And I want the new ways of self-help to ask you the right questions because there's only so much information we can consume Um, A lot of times we, we have the answers. We just need to be asked the right questions. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to have to look more into that. That's, that's. Yeah. And we can do, um, uh, I should have said this before, but let's do a free month for your listeners. So um, (laughs) yeah, we can uh, use the code code soul. Does that work? Or what what would be a good code? Yes. Soul Soul works. Okay. Um, Yeah. And you can go to prompted.io and redeem it. Perfect. That's uh, great. We'll see how many people sign up. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then we should also um, work with you, Annie, on getting some pathways on there from you because that would be wonderful. I would love to. Oh my gosh. That okay. is, oh my God. You're, that's so wonderful. <laughs> no, I would love that. That's going to be great. I'm so excited to take your pathways. Oh, yay. <laughs> so, my last question is, what advice do you have who, for anyone who is looking to add more purpose to their lives? Mm, Someone who's looking to add more purpose to their life. Um, one of the things that I talked about in Chasing the Bright Side that I think is uh, a really good test, um, I call it the purpose test. And it's where you take the thing that you're chasing right now, what it is that you're pursuing. Um, if you have a startup idea, if you have a goal, whatever it might be, and then what would it look like and feel like for that thing to be successful? And then ask yourself, if I hit that success point, that definition of success, but no one knew it was me, you know, you had to remove your name from it. It was a secret. Like Annie was not attached to it. Jess was not attached to it. Would I do it anyway? And that's like a real gut check of 
um, am I doing things based on how they look or based on how they feel? Because when you do things based on how they feel, it doesn't matter how they look because it feels good to me, or I know this is going to leave a lasting impact or a legacy. And so it's really easy to, in today's age, to do things for the likes, for the reels, for the TikToks, for like all the things that we feel like we need to be showcasing. Um, So imagine removing your name from it. And if it's still meaningful to you, then you really lean into it because you found something purposeful. That, that is great advice. It's you're not doing it for the acknowledgement. You're doing it for your soul heart's purpose. Yes, exactly. Very yeah. on brand for this podcast. Yes, it <laughs> is. So, okay. One last, I, I love it. One last question. Where can people find Chasing the Bright Side? Awesome. I would love if you got it. Uh, we just have a new cover that came out with the paperback and you can get it on Amazon. I recommend calling your local bookstore to see if they have it first because got to support local. And if not, they can probably order it. Um, it's in some Walmart locations as well as Barnes and Noble. But yeah, you can go uh, really anywhere books are sold. Your local library might have it too, but you can also request that they get it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed our conversation. And I think my viewers and listeners are going to get a lot out of this. Thank you, Annie, for having me. I enjoyed being here. Thank you.